जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंदा जय द्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंदा जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण Today we are honoring the appearance day of Sri Advaita Acharya, yeah. Bhakta Avatar. <laughs> so, this is a verse from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter one, verse number thirteen. Advaitam Harinam Dwataha. Advaitam Harinam Harinam Dvatta Harinam Dvatta Arjayam Bhakta Samsanat Bhakta Vataram Ishwaram Tham Advaita Charyam Asraye Advaitam Harinam Dvaita Arjayam Bhakta Samsanat Bhakta Vataram Isham Tham Advaita Charyam Asraye Advaitam Harinam Dvaita Acharyam Bhakta Samsanat Bhakta Vataram Isham Tham Advaita Acharyam Asraye Ladies, 
Advaitam, known as Advaita, Harina, with Lord Hari, Advaitat, from being non different. Acharyam, known as Acharya, Bhakti Samsanat, from the propagation of devotional service to Sri Krishna, Bhakta Avataram, the incarnation of a devotee, Isham, to the Supreme Lord, Tam, to him. Advaita Acharyam to Advaita Acharya Asraye I surrender. Translation Because he is non different from Lord Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. And I'll read text 14 also. Panchatattvam makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupakam bhakta avatara bhakta kyam namami bhakti shaktikam Translation, I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, who is non-different from his features as a devotee, devotee incarnation, devotee manifestation, pure devotee, and devotional energy. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manau Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bande Ham Shi Guru Shi Uta Padakamalam Shi Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shi Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Rishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha Kalpa Tarugascha Kriva Sindhu Bebraja Patitanham Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Dhamona Ajano Lambita Bhujo Kanakama Takso Sankirtanai Papitaro Kamalaya Takso Vishwambaro Dvijabaro Yuga Dharma Falo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Avatar Om Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithanand Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Chira Prabhu Bad Ki Jai So we are honoring the appearance of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Advaita Acharya, who 
manifested his appearance in this world as a service to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohiyanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Sri Krishna himself. And the devotional embodiment of his own loving relationship as Srimati Radharani, who manifests her sweet love for the Lord and the mood of a devotee. Sri Advaita Acharya was a personality who came to inspire or to facilitate the appearance of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We read in this one verse, which is often quoted by the Acharyas, Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam. So the Lord manifests Himself in this particular tattva as five. There are five truths. The absolute truth, sunam bonam, cause of all causes, the manifestation of all that exists appears in his own personal features as himself in different as aspects of himself. And these are understood in different categories for the sake of function and for the sake of lila also. So here, it's men and understood that Krishna, Panchitattva Makam Krishna, Bhakta Rupa, that's Lord Chaitanya, Swarupa, his incarnation, Lord Nityananda, Sarupa Kam, Bhakta Avatar, Advaita Acharya, Bhakta Kyam, the embodiment of all devotional energies, and Bhakti Shakti, Gadadhar Pandit, Srivas. So five have become manifested. One has become five. <laughs> and Srila Prabhupada, in one of his lectures, in trying to give us an understanding of personality over impersonality, or the relationship between personality and impersonality, explains that God is not one, but five. <laughs> Sometimes people say, well, God is not a person. We don't say that, we say he's five. <laughs> five in one. <laughs> not just one, but five. <laughs> so. And each of the functions, or each of the manifestations of the absolute truth has a particular aspect of his lila and his functions. And there's a Dwaita Acharya. Well, who is he? The absolute truth is one and many simultanea. Advaitam, achutam, anadi, anantarupam. He's existing as one, but he manifests in different manifestations of himself for both the functions and for the leelas. So in this very amazing manifestation of the Absolute Truth, he's come as Sadashiva and Mahavishnu. When Lord Chaitanya, I'm sorry, when Krishna expands himself into different manifestations of himself within the spiritual realm, those manifestations continue into the realm of material functions. And the first manifestation of that expansion of the Lord is Mahavishnu. <laughs> so as the Lord expands from Krishna to Balaram, from Balaram to the four manifestations of the spiritual Narayan manifestation, that is Vasudev, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Pradyuma, then come the Narayan incarnations, then the Chaturvyuha manifests again, and then 
Sankarshan of the second chapter, Vyuhan, expands into the form of Mahavishnu. And Mahavishnu begins the function of creation. So that same Mahavishnu has manifested himself in this material world to assist himself in his own leelas in his Advaita Chari. <laughs> The Absolute Truth is very intricate and very impossible to understand by one's intelligence, by one's uh, even imagination. Mm -hmm. Nothing, the Absolute Truth is, only can be understood by the mercy of the Absolute Truth Himself, which comes through the pure Acharyas, the pure devotees of the Lord who manifest the teachings of the Lord by their bhakti and by their deep, deep, by their full engagement in devotional love to the Supreme Lord. So we understand Advaita Charya is very impossible to understand. We cannot understand the Absolute Truth. Prabhupada said, if you could understand the Absolute Truth, you would be as good as the Absolute Truth. <laughs> of course, some spiritual speculators, to use a very loose term, think the absolute truth <coughs> is understandable or manifested in the form of the living beings in this world. And that's also part of the absolute truth, as the jiva is also an aspect of the absolute truth. But because of the jiva's separation or apparent separation, or covering by the material energy, the jiva has lost its understanding of its relationship with the Absolute Truth. And therefore, in trying to find its relationship with the Absolute Truth, one of the forms of misspeculation, there's many, there's many forms of speculation, <laughs> and they're all miss because speculation itself defines itself as misspeculation. <laughs> Uh, one of the forms is that living entity thinks they are the absolute truth. <laughs> and that's called impersonalism or mayavad. <laughs> so, but the absolute truth cannot be understood by the jiva unless the jiva becomes what we say blessed by full devotion and by the mercy of the absolute truth. And then we can only get a sample understanding. So that's how deep the absolute truth is. So what we can hear from the Acharyas, and the same Advaita Acharya, he appeared before Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, he appeared, it says that he was 52 years before Lord Chaitanya. Uh, a little bit of his background, um, his father was Kuvera Pandit, his mother's name, I can't remember. Maybe some of the Brahmacharis know. Huh? Can't remember his mother's name. But he appeared in one village, slipping my mind, the place. But he appeared <coughs> to precede Lord Chaitanya's appearance in this world in order to bring the Lord into the world. <laughs> It says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world for six, what we say, reasons, apparently. There's more. We know of six. <laughs> because when the Lord does something, He does it in grand style. <laughs> and three of them are considered to be external or for the sake of the jivas. And three are considered to be internal or for his own transcendental leelas, mm -hmm. which the jivas benefit also. And those external reasons is that yada yada yadharmasya glanir bhavati bharata mabhutana madharmasya tadatvanam srijami aham pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpana pana sambhavami yuge yuge. Krishna in Bhagavad Gita explains that when irreligion goes down, 
which this is the nature of this material world, irreligion is always under, I mean, irreligion is always going up. When irreligion goes up and true religion goes down, we want irreligion to go down. <laughs> when true religion goes down and irreligion goes up, which is the nature of this material energy, because the conditioned souls in this world are not interested in making this world the spiritual world because they come to we come to this material world to create a different type of atmosphere which is contrary to the spiritual atmosphere which is always miserable and always full of suffering <laughs> that's the nature of this world and so the lord comes as his mercy manifestation of himself in order to bring back true religious principles so that's one of the reasons why the Lord appears in this world. Another reason is that uh, to propagate the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna avatar, namahoite haya sarva jagat nishtara. So this particular yuga is called Kali Yuga. And in each yuga, there is a way to practice the process of bhakti that will bring about the success of one's practice. And that is the essence of the practice and the foremost principle of all the practice is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And Sri Advaita Charya is the focus of one of the external reasons. He was so compassionate. That's the nature of Sada Shiva. As we mentioned, he's Mahavishnu, but he's also Sada Shiva. Sada Shiva means the original Shiva in the spiritual world, who manifests his form in all the manifestations of the universes as the individual Shiva for the function of carrying out the aspect of the second super soul in this material world, which is Shiva. But the original Shiva, Sadashiva, is manifested in the form of Advaitacharya along with Mahavishnu. So, in that compassionate mood, he's seeing that during the time of the not in the Navadvip during that time, people were so-called practicing spirituality in order to gain material gain. <laughs> this is quite common. <laughs> Not as a common, it's everywhere. <laughs> People practice spiritual life to improve material situations, to get material gain, to somehow or other ward off material suffering. These are considered to be, from one perspective, Nice, and from another perspective, wrong. <laughs> In the sense that it's not the goal of spiritual life is simply to make a better material arrangement. The goal of spiritual life is to awaken our love of God, Prema Pumarta Mahan, to open up our heart in bhakti, and to let that love flow towards its natural source, which is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the actual purpose of devotional service or bhakti. And so when people were practicing various types of spiritual homas, vratas, pujas, various types of austerities, the goal was to improve the material conditions and so on. And there was hardly any real bhakti at the time. Now, uh, Dvaita Acharya, being the Supreme Personality of God, had seen this, he was very concerned. In fact, his concern became, it turned into a form of anger. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you have a little child, 
And you try to do whatever you can to help the child and care for the child and guide the child and direct them in the, the proper way. But the child just doesn't respond. So you get angry. That anger is a manifestation of love for the child. It's not at a frustration. It's just a way of ex exp experience the anguish of what we say, the child's un inability to fulfill its, pur its purpose in life. And that's love. So out of love, he became angry. And he actually said, I think I just should destroy everybody. <laughs> he could have did it too. But that wouldn't have solved the problem. But he's thinking, Actually, it's the, the work of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna himself. So with great, great desire in his heart, he went down to the banks of the Ganga and worshipping the Shalagram Shila in a very, very focused way from focusing all his time on just calling the Lord and offering puja to the Lord by offering beautiful flowers and tulsi leaves to the shalagram and praying to the Lord, please come and save all these conditioned souls from their ignorance. Deep heartfelt compassion, not considering anything else but the welfare of the living entities. It's interesting though, Srila Haridas Thakur also was also chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, of course 333,333 names a day, also in prayer to bring Lord Chaitan, to bring Lord Krishna into this world. So both of them together were praying for the advent of the Lord. And it's interesting, at that time, Sachi Mata was there. And uh, she used to go to the Ganga every day to bathe. Now we hear that she had some miscarriages before actually the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, it's explained she had eight miscarriages. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I pretty much cannot analyze the anguish and pain a, a woman must go through. A prospective mother must go through having to lose eight children. But somehow or other, it was the arrangement of the Lord. And you know, it's mentioned in one Shastra, I think it's in Chaitanya Bhagwan or by Lochan Das Thakur, that when Sachi Mata used to go down to bathe in her state of pregnancy, when, Lord, when Advaita Chari was offering tulsi leaves and flowers, the flowers would float down the Ganga and they would hit her body. And by that flower hitting her body, that child would disappear. <laughs> Pretty heavy, huh? <laughs> Advaita Charya was causing the miscarriages. We can't blame him for that because <laughs> he's the Lord. But he knew and of course, he was praying for the speedy appearance of Lord Krishna himself. And so, it is described that by his prayers, Lord Chaitanya actually came to this world. Advaita Charya, Prabhupada said he had six sons. <laughs> his wife was Sitar Thakurani. <laughs> And they lived in a place called Shantipur. <laughs> and he was known as the one of the most respected, honorable, and learned brahmanas of the time, especially in the area of Shantipur. Such respectability he had. He used to teach others Shastra. It's why he was called Acharya. And it's mentioned he had six sons. 
And Prabhupada mentions in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now this is really interesting. You'd think, now he's a he's God. <laughs> and he's a manifestation of the Lord's mercy in this world. He appears in this form as an Acharya, as a great Brahmana, as a respectable personality in all regards. And he has children. And six of them, three of them, were impersonalists, <laughs> or materialists, actually. And three were actually bhaktas. It's interesting that three of his sons actually had a different understanding of spiritual practice and became what we say against the principles of real, pure bhakti. Prabhupada talks about that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said Charitamrita. He calls it. They were asara. <laughs> Asara means useless. <laughs> Although they were children of a great personality, they had deviated from the true principles of devotion. And therefore they were rejected. But three were actually great devotees of the Lord. Achyutananda, uh, who was his... Uh, Is, I can't remember his three sons. Does anyone? Gopal, Achyutananda, and one more. The other three, other three were Balaram, Jagadish, and one other. So it's interesting. The Supreme Personality of God in that form, he appears. And his children are not all devotees. I guess we have that problem too sometimes, right? <laughs> That's the power of the material energy, right? Prabhupada said, don't play around with this material energy. It's so powerful. A living entity already is attracted to the material energy and the association of material energy can cause one to deviate from real religious principles. Advaita Charya, his wife, Sitar Takarani, <laughs> When the news of the appearance of Lord Chaitanya in the world came, she used to go along with other ladies and they would visit the child. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya, when he, would, when he was a, just a little boy, he would cry <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and sometimes this crying would cause others to become disturbed of course it was, because they were thinking, this child's not happy. Why is he always crying? But Lord Chaitanya would cry as a little baby because he was really crying because they were not chanting. <laughs> the Acharyas cry because the conditioned souls are not chanting. <laughs> so he was crying in order to get them to chant. And then they would try different things to, to make the child happy, to entertain the child or just to divert his attention away from crying but nothing would work until he chanted they started to chant Krishna they started Krishna's name and then he would start smiling and when they really started to chant Krishna's name he would get up and start dancing as a little baby <laughs> so he got everyone to chant and Sikhar Sita Takarani she came one time this is an interesting little pastime. She uh, was, uh, if I could remember this pastime, it's kind of sweet. She was going to offer some bananas to her deity before she, just before she was coming to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But she didn't for some reason, or couldn't find the bananas. There was something, something went wrong. And the offering wasn't made. And then she came to see little Nimai. And then when she got there, she noticed there was a smell of bananas. <laughs> when she came in the association of the child. 
And it's described that the Lord was so pleased with her devotion that he ate the bananas before she made the offering. <laughs> she actually offered it in her heart, and Lord Chaitanya accepted it. And that smell was detectable when she came to see the Lord. Advaita Charya, his pastimes are so numerous, we can tell a few of them. His, uh, he had a secretary, assistant, and his assistant, he wrote a note one time to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and on the note it said, uh, uh, Advaita is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His, his name was Kamalaka Vishvasu. Kamala Vishvasu. Kamalakara Vishvasu, his actual name was. And he wrote this letter, a note, the Advaita Chari is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he has a debt of 300 rupees to the king of Orissa. <laughs> He's a debtor. <laughs> that note got back to Lord Chaitanya. When he saw that, he became really, really disturbed. Really disturbed. Who is this person? What is he saying? He's saying that the, the Advaita is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he's a common debtor. How can the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of everything, the cause of all causes, he's Bhagavan, he is, when we say, full in all six opulences, and one of his opulences is all wealth, he has a debt of 300 rupees. <laughs> It's farcical. It's a joke. But it wasn't so funny to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became very upset about this. And he, of course, chastised Kamala Kahala Vishvasu for this oversight. How can you say that well, he's the Lord and at the same time you put him on the level as a common man, common debtor, like that. Advaita Charya didn't take issue with his, with his servant, but Lord Chaitanya did. Advaita Charya, because he was older than Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya would respect him as a senior, as a a respectable personality, and Lord Chaitanya would always honor him and offer obeisances to him. And this was intolerable for Advaita Acharya to have Lord Chaitanya offer respects for. So he would think, what can I do to get Lord Chaitanya to understand that I am his servant? A devotee doesn't like to be honored. A devotee likes to be served. To honor a devotee is natural, but a devotee finds more happiness when they can honor and serve others because that is the principle of bhakti. When one is honored and one is served, you accept that as the love from others. And that's, and that's, that's what we say a reciprocation, but in your mind and heart, you don't accept it in the sense that you don't feel like you're qualified or you're, what we say, able to take their offering of love as something that is actually true. It's simply honor. Honor is meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Completely. We get honored, we get worship, we get facilities, but the devotee just doesn't take that serious as passes it on. But the devotee's happiness is not in that, but the devotee's happiness is in to serve and to honor others, to glorify the Lord, to glorify the Lord's devotees, and to serve. That's the happiness 
And that is natural. It's happy because natural. It's natural. And happiness is natural. <laughs> There's artificial happiness, but that's not natural. That's what people in this material world go on as happiness. That kind of happiness makes one unhappy. Because <laughs> it leads to a f the real unhappiness, and it's another form of unhappiness in itself. <laughs> Material happiness is another form of unhappiness because it diverts one away from real happiness. Make sense? Sometimes it does. <laughs> but this, so a devotee's happiness is real happiness and real happiness is to serve. To get the opportunity to serve or to seek out the opportunity to serve and to find but we say fulfillment in that service. So Advaita wasn't feeling at all happy because Lord Chaitanya wanted to serve and honor him. So he's thinking, what can I do to get Lord Chaitanya to, re to understand that I'm his servant and to accept me in that way? <clears throat> so he did something really revolutionary. Something we don't recommend. <laughs> In fact, we not only don't recommend it, we condemn it. <laughs> he decided to get Lord Chaitanya upset. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> of course, Lord Chaitanya is very kind and merciful. But he does get upset <laughs> if one pre presents himself in another way but is different. In other words, he wanted to, he was a devotee, but he was presenting himself as a non-devotee, <laughs> as a Mayavad. So what he would do is he would hear from Mayavads, where those who are teaching what is called karma kanda. Um, the kandas or the activities that are mentioned in the Shastras simply for material gain and to understand the living the, the jiva and the, the supreme are the same <laughs> no difference because we don't say that the jiva is also spirit but the jiva is same and different simultaneously so Dwaita Acharya was hearing that philosophy was saying that the jiva and the supreme lord are not different <laughs> and so just to get Lord Chaitanya. So one day Lord Chaitanya said to Lord Nityananda, let's go visit Advaita. Advaita was in Shantipur. So they went. It's described that they were traveling along the banks of the Ganga. And then they passed by this little hermitage or little cottage, it's described. And Lord Chaitanya said, who, who resides there? And Lord Nityananda said, oh, that's a, a sannyasi. He stays there. Oh, Lord Chaitanya said, sannyasis? We can get a blessing. <laughs> Let's go get a blessing. Let's see this fifth sannyasi and get his blessing. So they went. They came in and a sannyasi was there. He was a little elderly. They came in and uh, he welcomed them. And Lord Chaitanya thought, oh, I'm in the presence of a sannyasi. I should ask him a question, <laughs> get some knowledge. So he said, what is actually the goal of life in this age? So the sannyasi actually said, well, actually the goal of life is to perform one's activities in this world in such a way that one will find fulfillment in all aspects of one's life. <laughs> in other words, one should aspire to be happy by material gain. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya didn't really get too angry, but he disagreed. He said, actually, this is not correct. <laughs> he said, the goal in life actually is, is to chant the Hare Krishna mantra and to love God. <laughs> Now the sannyasi felt a little upset that he was being challenged by someone who was younger than him. And so he started to say, just see, this is the influence of Kali Yuga. The babes are just coming out of their womb and are teaching us who knows actually the truth. 
So Lord Chaitanya was still very adamant, and so a little discussion got heated, and Lord Nityananda said, let's not argue. <laughs> let's, sit, let's have some prasad. <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya said, actually today I'm just, I'm just eating fruits, I'm, I'm actually just fasting. But the, the, the sannyasi said, no, actually you are my guest, so I should give you something. He said, uh, uh, this is the guests should get respected, they should get some prasadam, some special mercy. So the sannyasi called his wife. <laughs> he was a different kind of sannyasi. <laughs> and so the sannyasi's wife came out with prasad. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was a little surprised, <laughs> to say the least. And then he said, actually, today I'm just fasting. I'll just take a little fruits. No, the sannyasi was insistent. No, please take some. And then... The sannyasi said, would you like some bliss? <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya turned to Lord Nityananda and says, what does he mean by bliss? <laughs> and uh, Lord Nityananda said, he wants to know if you want some wine, <laughs> some little spirits, not transcendental spirits, but <laughs> different kind of spirits. <laughs> And uh, Lord Chaitanya looked at Lord Nityananda, and they looked at each other, they just turned around and ran out <laughs> fast as they could. They went right towards the Ganges with their clothes on and just jumped in. <laughs> so they came up, tried, got dried off, and then they went on their way to Shantipur. And they arrived at the house of Advaita Chari, and Advaita Chari was there in the courtyard with his wife, Sasita Takarani, and Haridas Thakur was also there. As soon as, Advaita, as soon as Lord Chaitanya saw Advaita Acharya, his eyes became like molten fire and he just started to go at Lord Advaita with full speed and he came up to Advaita and he started, what are you doing? What are you, I've come to this world in order to teach true religious principles and you're teaching something different and he started to beat him. <laughs> his fist, he was just beating him and beating him and beating him and beating him. Haridas Thakur was saying, oh no. And his wife, Sitar Takarani, she was saying, he's an old man, you're going to kill him. <laughs> and Advait Acharya was enjoying it. <laughs> he was really having a good time. <laughs> he was loving every minute of it. He was thinking, finally, I got the mercy. <laughs> And then uh, Nityananda was laughing. <laughs> so, but finally, Lord Chaitanya stopped. And then he started to chastise him. And then the Dvaita was so happy. But Lord Chaitanya didn't appreciate that so much. But then, of course, the Dvaita says, now you have accepted me as your servant. Because... A master, when the servant goes wrong, always takes some action. So you have taken action against your servant. <laughs> Very severe action. <laughs> but Krishna, what is it? Ah, aparadi, mayavadi Krishna aparadi. Ah, that the mayavadis are fenders to, to the Lord. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. Uh, even the devotees would speak. Now, Prabhupada was so kind, loving, but when it comes to any deviation in the philosophy, Prabhupada was like a lion. He was getting that also. He got that from his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. Such a lion when it came to any kind of philosophical deviations in the name of true bhakti or true, true religious principles. But Prabhupada also, they would speak, the devotees would speak, while well, Prabhupada couldn't tolerate philosophical presentations that were different than the, the actual teachings of the Lord and the Acharyas. Couldn't tolerate such things. 
So Lord Chaitanya was like that. He, he said that the Lord is hard as a thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's powerful. You ever see? <laughs> you know, he hits something, it just a thunderbolt can just destroy a tree or a house. Finished. So powerful. It's the greatest of all what we say weapons in creation. It's Lord Lord Inter's weapon, the thunderbolt. But it says the thunderbolt hits a mountain, the mountain becomes just dirt, <laughs> scattered dirt. Very strong. So so the the Lord can be strong like that. But he can also, and he's also soft and gentle as a rose. So loving, so kind, so sweet, so inviting in so many ways. The so Lord Chaitanya was like that. And so the Charyas are also like that. They have that personality. In their heart, they're loving, but at the same time, they don't tolerate, in the name of truth, something that is untruth. Or compromise. So Advaita Charya was happy to get the mercy. He was happy to get the, the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. During the Mahakaprakash Leela, this is an interesting story. Lord Chaitanya was, he took the mood of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He was sitting on the throne of Narayan, in the house of Srivas, he had taken all the Shalagram Shilas off the throne and put them on his lap and he sat on the throne. And the devotees were so elated, so happy. The Lord is actually taking the part of his real position. And he was just accepting worship and honor and prayers and praise, so many things. And then this went on for so many hours. And then the Lord at the end was so reciprocal to his devotees, he was just asking, please take a blessing. He would ask each and every person, please take a blessing. And devotees were asking, not for themselves, but for their mothers or for their friends or for other devotees, give, my, give them devotion, give them spiritual enthusiasm. So many only spiritual benedictions were being asked. So one time, one devotee said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, give your mother Sachi Mata, love of God. Lord Chaitanya became silent, didn't say anything. He said, not in an angry way, but in a very firm way, my mother, She's an offender. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the devotees couldn't understand that. What do you mean? Sachi Mata, she's the mother of the universe. She has all good qualities. She's your mother. How could she be an offender? Or Chaitanya said she offended Advaita Acharya. <laughs> and then he went on to explain. Now Advaita Acharya was there. And the Lord went on to explain that actually she never really committed an offense, but the Lord accepted something that seemed like a defense. Is that Lord Chaitanya's older brother, Vishwarup, when he was going to see Advaita Charya, Advaita Charya was teaching him all kinds of Shastra and all kinds of philosophical knowledge. And he lost all interest in family life. I mean, that was, that was her older son. She had plans for him to get married. But because of his association with Advaita Charya, and because of Advaita Charya's teaching him so many philosophical... He decided to renounce everything, gave up all attachment, and just left one day and was never heard of again. Now, Sachi Mata was unhappy with that, but she didn't say that. 
But then her second son, Nimai, Nimai Pandit, Lord Chaitanya, he started to go and hear from Advaita Acharya. And she was thinking, oh no, <laughs> it's going to happen again. He's going he's gonna to hear from him and he's going he's gonna to lose all his attraction for, for married life and take sannyas. So she said, this Advaita, she didn't say it. She actually didn't say it, but she thought in her mind, this Advaita Charya, he's not Advaita, he's Dwaita. He's dualistic. He presents himself as an Acharya, but actually he's got some other program there. <laughs> he's, uh, he's Dwaita. She didn't say it, but she was a mother's, what we say, disappointment came out in the form of that thought. And Lord Chaitanya brought that out. He said, my mother offended Advaita Acharya. She can't get love of God. Devotees were shocked. What do you mean? Is there any way? And Lord Chaitanya said, yes, she can get love of God. She can get the full mercy of the Lord if she can take the dust of the lotus feet of a Dwaita chariot and put it on her head. <laughs> so, now Dwaita chariot was there. He heard the whole thing. He was thinking, Sachi Mata, my foot, my foot dust on her head? No way. <laughs> it's not, I'm not going to give her my foot dust. This is like, you know, this is an offense. She's, she's like, she's as good as my mother. She's the mother of the universe. She's the mother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. She has all good qualities. And so he wasn't willing to give the dust. <laughs> Devotees are like that sometimes, right? You have to steal it. So Kirtan began. And then the Kirtan went on for some time. And Advaita Chari was dancing and dancing and dancing. He likes to dance. He was dancing. And he got overwhelmed with ecstasy and he lost consciousness and fainted. And there he was on the floor. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya looked at his mother and said, Okay, here's your chance. <laughs> And steal it now. <laughs> he's he's not going to resist. <laughs> so she went over and took the dust and put it on her head. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to show something really subtle that a Vaishnav has <clears throat> should never be criticized in any way. He wanted to make the point in the what we say the most powerful way. Mother Sanchi was not an offender, <clears throat> but Lord Chaitanya took that opportunity just to show that one should never have any ill feelings towards any Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. Because a Vaishnava is very special, <laughs> very dear to the Lord, and full of all good qualities. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to make that declaration that one should free themselves from any ill feelings towards any Vaishnav in whatever way that we can, either through forgiveness or through service, by doing some service and by offering forgiveness like that. So today is a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. We'll be Honoring Adwaita. One of the best ways to honor Advaita Chari is to have kirtan. <laughs> and said that he would, he would be a, a mad dancer. <laughs> He's Shiva, you know. <laughs> He's got the element of Shiva there. So he dances very wildly. Srila <laughs> yeah. Prabhupada, when he was a young man, he was involved with one drama, which was the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And he was given the part of Advaita Charya. 
And he played the part so expertly that persons in the audience were crying. <laughs> they were really moved to tears just by seeing Srila Prabhupada play the role of Advaita Acharya. And we can actually say that he's in that role. <laughs> we give him different models to see a Prabhupada in different ways, but what was Advaita Acharya? Compassion for the fallen conditioned souls and deep devotion towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Srila Prabhupada also, although he was elderly, he started his movement in the West at the age of 70 years old. But at the 1967, I think it was, 67, Rathiyatra in San Francisco, when the devotees had built a makeshift car and were performing the Ratha Yatra, Prabhupada danced the whole way. It says that he danced from the beginning to the end, all the way, the whole Ratha Yatra. And it was long, it wasn't sm a small Ratha Yatra. And it said the devotees were amazed to see Prabhupada dancing, and some of them were, couldn't even keep up with Srila Prabhupada. He was such an ecstasy. His ecstasy of seeing Lord Jagannath appearing in the Western world to all these fallen conditioned souls to give his mercy in the form of Jagannath Baladeva and Subhadra Devi. So Prabhupada danced the whole time in the mood of, we can say in the mood of compassion, the mood of ecstasy, and in the mood of Advaita Acharya, like that. So today is a very special day. Panchatattva uh, makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam bhakta avatar bhakta kyam nami bhakti shakti kam. So we honor this great personality as the supreme personality of Godhead, but as a devotee of the Lord also. It says that of the five, Lord Nityananda, he is Balaram. Rajendra Nandana Ye Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se Balaram Hoilo Nitai. Nitai has come. He's the manifestation of Lord Balaram in this age to bring Krishna's teachings, Krishna's pastimes into our world, into our life. And Advaita Charya Mahavishnu Sadashiva, compassion and great devotion. Actually, at one point, after Lord Chaitanya had performed his leelas towards the end of his time with us, Advaita Charya made a very mysterious statement in the assembly of the devotees one time, where he said that he made something that no one could figure out except two people. And then those two paper persons was Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. He said, if I can remember the exact, I can't remember the exact words, but there's no more demand, although there is so much rice in the marketplace, still there is no more demand and everyone has become happy. The marketplace is full of rice, but there's no demand, and everyone has become happy. So when Lord Nityananda heard that, he was unhappy. <laughs> when Lord Chaitanya heard that, he was thinking, Advaiti, he's calling me, now he's telling me to go. He's the same personality who has come. He's called me, now he's sending me back. He's sending me back. So this was Lord Chaitanya's understanding of Advaita Acharya. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Ghor Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे धाम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम हरे धाम 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 हरे श्री अद्वैत आचार्य की जय श्री अद्वैत आचार्य अपीरेंस दे की गोपाल नंदे इवो हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू वेरी मच श्री प्रभु पाद की जय thank you very much chandramouli maharaj so we would like to express our gratitude to his holiness chandramouli swami maharaj for inspiring us with this wonderful narration on the appearance of lord advaita let us express our gratitude by loudly chanting hari 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 thank you maharaj